So to start off, we have DD summon Kepler. When Kepler is summoned, you can use one of two effects. To either get a dark contract card from your deck to your hand, or to add a D or to return a DD monster that you control back to your hand. You can only use that effect once a turn to use one of those two. Kepler is also scale 10, and the pendulum effect is just bad, but it is to, redu to reduce itself by 2 every turn, the minimum I can go to is 1, and then destroy all cards you control that are above its pendulum scale. The only time you'll ever scale it is if you need to pendulum summon a level 8. Next up is DD Savant Copernicus. Copernicus is a scale 1 and is a level 4. The pendulum effect is that if you take damage by a spell effect, you can destroy Copernicus and you don't take that damage. Also, I believe you can't pendulum summon DDs. Yeah, you can't pendulum summon monsters except DDs. Copernicus is also a level 4, which does come up with plays for the extra deck. Whenever Copernicus is summoned, you can send a DD or Dark Contract card from your deck to your graveyard. There are different combos where you'll end up sending either a DD card or a Dark Contract. It really depends on what combo you're playing. And Copernicus and Kepler both have zero attack, by the way, so don't plan on attacking with them. Next up, DD Griffin. Griffin is a level 4, a level 4. It can summon itself from the hand if you control DD in defense mode. If it's summoned from the graveyard, you can get a DD from your deck to your hand, and if it's pendulum summoned, you can discard a DD or dark contract to draw a card. It is 1200 attack and defense. It is a scale 1, and it has a scale effect where if you have a DD or dark con or sorry, if you have a dark contract on your field or in your field or graveyard, you can destroy it so that a DD you control gains 500 attack for each dark contract on your field or in the graveyard. Griffin will mainly be used as either the ability to get into a rank 4, the ability to get into your link monster, or to trigger the effects of your fusion monsters. Next up, two copies of DD Orthos. Orthros is the main tuner for the deck, being a level 4. It has the Pendulum effect where once a turn you can target one spell or trap on the field and one other DD or Dark Contract on the field and destroy them both. Orthros is a scale 3, has 600 attack and 1800 defense, and whenever it's special summoned, you can... or no, if you special summon it, you can't summon fe anything other than fiends for the rest of the turn, and if you take battle or effect damage, you can summon Orthros from your hand. Next up, 1D Savant Thomas. Thomas, whenever it is on the field, has the Pendulum effect, where you can return a DD from your face of extra deck back to your hand. Or, if it is in your monster zone, then you can target one other DD, or a DD in your Pendulum zone, destroy it, and special summon a level 8 DDD from the extra deck. But its effects are negated. You can only use that effect once a turn. And Thomas is a scale 6 and a level 8, so that does come up if you're trying to get out a rank 8. Next up, Oblivion King of this Ragnarok. Ragnarok, whenever it's summoned, it revives a DDD from the graveyard, and you contribute a DD to banish a card your opponent controls. Whenever it is in the Pendulum Zone, if a DD is special summoned, you can pay 1,000 life points and summon another DD from your graveyard. That does come up with some combos. Next up we have the DD Cerberus. It is a scale 6. Whenever it's in a scale, you can use it to change a DD you control to level 4, and it gains 400 attack and defense until the end of the turn. Whenever it's pendulum summon from the hand, you can add a continuous spell from your graveyard to your hand. That has come up before. Next up, Divine King Zero Rage. Rage is mainly used as a skill zero or for its ability to tribute ADD and apply one of the following effects to let him attack directly, to shut off your opponent's spell and traps for the rest of the turn, or to as a thought your opponent. 
so they can't use card effects in their hand or graveyard. It's a skill zero, which means you can pendulum summon level ones with it, which does come up. It absolutely is important. Trust me. And also, if your opponent has 4,000 or less attack points, his attack becomes equal to your opponent's life points. The scale effect is if you would take effect damage, you can just not take effect damage. And if you would normal summon a level 5 or higher DD, then you can do it without tributing. Both of those are only once a turn. However, the monster effects are not once a turn. Next up, for the non-pendulums, so for just the regular monsters, three DD Scroll Slime. DD Scroll Slime has the effect where you can use it in your hand to fuse it with another DD monster, and then you can banish it from the graveyard to summon a DD from your hand. Swirl Slime, if you get that, then you have generally at least a three card combo. And you always want to see Swirl Slime. Next up, DD Lamia. This card can be played at either one or two. It's only needed at one, but it does come up. It's part of a one card combo. And what it does is if it's in the field or in the hand or graveyard, you can send a DD or Dark Contract from your hand or field to the graveyard to special summon Lamia. But after you do that, Lamia will be banished when she leaves the field. Lamia is also a level 1 tuner, which used to be very important, but isn't as much anymore. 100 attack and 1900 defense. Next up, DD Necro Slime and DD Vice Typhon. These basically have the same effect, except they're only once, or they are both hard ones per turn, so that's why you play two, uh, or these both. Both of these are hard ones per turn, so that's why you play one of each instead of just two Necro Slime. Basically, whenever they are in the graveyard, you can banish them to Fusion Summon a DDD. If you're using Vice Typhon, however, then the DD has to be level 7 or higher that you're summoning. And Vice can only use that effect the turn it was sent to the graveyard. So those are the monsters that the deck generally plays. Next up, the spells. Dark Contract with a Gate. This card, once per turn, can get you a DD from your deck to your hand. That is hard once per turn. You can only use one gate per turn. And during your standby phase, pay 1,000 life points. Next up, Dark Contract with the Swamp King. Dark Contract with the Swamp King is a continuous miracle fusion, basically. You can use your hand, field, or graveyard. If you're using the graveyard, you can banish it. And of course, during your standby phase, pay 1,000 life points. Next up, Dark Contract with a Patent License. This is one of the newer cards, so a lot of people aren't familiar with it, but basically if your opponent summons anything from the extra deck, Fusion, Synchro, Xyz, or Link, then they take 1,000 damage and they can't summon anything of that type for the rest of the turn. And if Patent License is sent to the graveyard, then you can add a DD from your graveyard or a face-up DD Pendulum Monster from your... from one of those two places, to your hand. Last but not least, DDD Headhunt. If you control a DDD monster, you can target a monster my or your opponent controls, take control of it, and its effects are negated, and it can't attack. And if it was summoned from the extra deck, it becomes a DDD until the end of the next turn. So that's the deck core for the main deck. Usually the deck is also accompanied with a whole bunch of hand traps and other cards, like for example, Pure Race Map, which can get you a monster with zero attack from your deck to your hand, and you can't use the, it's you can't use any effects from a card with that's name until you normal summon that card. Some people also play Small World, but you don't really have to though. Next up is the extra deck. Generally, you play three copies of Abyss King Gilgamesh. You can get away with playing two, but I would not recommend it. It can really hurt the deck's ability to do some combos, and it messes up with our grind game. Next up, the fusions. 
always play at least two copies of Flame King Genghis. What it does is whenever a DD is special summoned, you can revive a DD from the graveyard. You can only use that effect once a turn. And when Genghis is sent to the graveyard, you can target a dark contract in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Next up, Flame King High Genghis. Whenever a DD is normal special summon, revive a DD from the graveyard like before. Except different with this one is whenever a spell or trap would be activated during gear turn, you can negate the activation. Next up, Oracle King Dark. This card isn't played in all builds, but it's played in most. It's a level seven with 2,800 attack and 2,000 defense. It requires two DD monsters, and its effect is whenever you would take effect damage, you gain that much instead. It's mainly just used for its level. Now the Synchro, Curse King Siegfried. It's a level eight, and it has the effect where once a turn, you can target a spell or trap on the field as a quick effect and negate it until the next standby phase. And if it is destroyed, or a battle, or card effect, you can also gain 1,000 life points for every dark contract you control. Now for the Xyz. Starting off is Wave King Caesar. It has the effect where you can detach a material, and at the end of the battle phase, special summon all D or all monsters that were destroyed that turn from your graveyard, and then you pay 1,000 life points for each during your next turn. And if it's sent from the field to the graveyard, you can get a dark contract from your deck to your hand. Up next, Marksman King Tell. You can rank up from Caesar into King Tell, which is pretty decent. What King Tell does is you can detach a material, target a monster on the field, it loses 1,000 attack and defense, and then your opponent takes 1,000 damage. Also, if King Tell is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can send a DD or dark contract from your deck to the graveyard. You're almost always going to use both of those effects. Now is the next one. Wave Hiking Caesar at rank 6. Usually you're going to summon this by using your two fusions. What it does is when a spell trap or a monster effect is activated that includes the effect that summons a monster, you can quick effect, detach material, negate the activation, and if you destroy it, and then you can make him and one other DDU control gain 1,800 attack until the end of the turn. And if High Caesar is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add a dark contract from your deck to your hand. Last but not least, two copies of Divisor King Deuce Machine X. I gotta read it. There's so many effect or there's so much text. It requires two level 10 fiend monsters, but you can also see someone it by using a DD monster you controls material, transfers materials to this card. You can only control one device you can use machine in your monster zone once a chain. When a monster card your opponent controls activates its effect, quick effect, you can either detach two materials from this card or destroy one dark contract you control. And if you do attach that opponent's card to this card as material, once per turn during your standby phase, you can place this card in your pendulum zone. It has 3,000 attack and 3,000 defense. It is a skill 10. And its pendulum effect is while you have a card in your other pendulum zone, you can target one pendulum you control or in your graveyard. Special summon the card in your pendulum zone, and if you do, play a set targeted pendulum monster in your pendulum zone. So for this segment, I'll be going into what card combinations to look for to know what kinds of combos you could generally be using for your hand. I'll be starting off with DD Savant Kepler, of course. If you see Kepler, you can always do at least a one card combo, which I don't know if I'll be showing before this or after this in the video. But basically it ends on, if I remember right, it is High Caesar and Machine X. That's generally the end result of it. Kepler is always at least a one card combo. Next up, Dark Contract with the Gate. Very similar to Kepler. You open this, it's at least a one card combo using Copernicus, sending Lamia, using Lamia to summon herself by sending Gate. And then after that you can scale Thomas and Griffin. Griffin will... No, wait, sir. first you pendulum summon back Copernicus, Griffin destroys itself, Thomas gives it to your hand, and then you have rank 4 plays. Which, of course, with DDD, means full combo. Which is really good. Next up, we have DD Savant Copernicus. If you see Copernicus plus any other DD, then it's usually 
a decent combo. If it's Copernicus and any other level 4, that is full combo. And it will be at least a 2 card combo. Next up is Griffin. Griffin means you either have a 2 or 3 card combo, sometimes 4 card combos, if you're lucky. But basically, Griffin will either be used to help you get into Gilgamesh, or it will be used to trigger the effect of Genghis to revive something from the graveyard. It can also be used as a searcher if it's revived from the graveyard to add any DD from your deck to your hand. Then is DD Swirl Slime. Swirl Slime usually means that you have a 3 card combo. It requires 3 cards for it to be as effective as possible, but it's really good to see it in your hand. Trust me, you absolutely want to see Swirl Slime anytime you can. It's one of your best cards. Up there with Griffin. And Gilgamesh. Last but not least that I'll be going over here is Divine King's Zero Rage. Rage generally acts as, as a thought. You can lock your opponent out of using hand traps or graveyard interruptions, which is absolutely amazing, and it means you can go full combo on them. And especially if you open it up with Swirl Slime as part of a three-card combo, it's going to be great, and you're just going to be popping off. I remember Pack actually used it in Sky against Sky Strikers and a YCS. It was absolutely amazing. So I just finished recording and editing the video. And it is absolutely going to be way too long to post as one video. I'm going to be dividing it into a few different parts. Going over first this part, which has the deck core and what cards to look for in your hand. Up next is going to be a combo guide. And then after that, I'm going to be going over the history of the deck and a few different things, such as separate builds. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video, and hopefully I'll be seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching.